the funny thing is that I don't ever remember feeling frightened. Too busy. Oh, it's one night I do remember I was frightened. A friend who had a flat in London lent it to me. And we did have a very, very bad blitz. And glass was flying out of windows. And I remember that I put on my fur coat, which I thought might be some protection, and stayed in the middle of the room where I hoped perhaps the flying glass wouldn't come. Yes, I was frightened that night. My vivid memory was my mother standing in the passageway with her chair all night long. So she knew she was near the door, that if the place got hit by a bomb or something, she had it in her mind that she could get out. Because the biggest worry in everybody's minds in those days was being buried alive. I think my mother was making my father a cup of cocoa or something at the time. And then all the ceilings came down, the windows came in, the front door came in, all the doors, oh. And I can remember rushing up those stairs trying to get to my parents. That was my first thought, to just get to them. I was making the tea in court. There was an incendiary bomb came down, anything like it. You could hear the screams, I'll hear it to me day and day. I was in an air raid shelter with three soldiers, and when the bombing came, we'd been told all to lie flat on the floor and put something over our heads, and the bombing got very, very bad, and one or two people started screaming, and the soldiers jumped to their feet and said, now, please, please, everybody, this is going to happen every night. You've got to get used to it, and they started singing when Irish eyes are smiling. When Irish eyes are smiling, short is like the My parents suddenly came up and grabbed hold of me and put me behind them. So if you can imagine this very small child behind their parents looking through their legs. Outside was a number of ambulance men with sacks and they were picking up arms and feet and putting them in the sack. I was the only youngster that was helping to move those bodies and at Romford Road Baths, um, what used to happen, there used to be two big removal vans going round to these bomb sites to collect the bodies, take them down to the Romford Road Baths, and then the undertakers would go in there and um, be shown by the relatives where they could identify them, which were theirs. All the world that is still free marvels at the composure and fortitude with which the citizens of London are facing and surmounting the great ordeal to which they are subjected. The process of thought was there's going to be a great war, there's going to be heavy air raids, London will be under attack, we'll do what we can to save London. I happened to be standing by the door one day, fire watching, and a bomb just fell down, hit the shop and you know, I just kicked it in the road. And the air warden gave me one shout and said, you silly fool, you could have blown your leg off, which was right, but you don't think. My main thought was to get the bomb away from the shop, otherwise I would have visions of the shop going up. As soon as we went outside, the heat just hit you. It was unbelievable. There was this gigantic, um, furniture shop it was burning and the flames were kind of leaping out through the terrace and it was like some kind of fantasy world down in the dock you'd be fighting in classes because there were fires all around you weren't fighting one fire isolated fire they're all around there was a roar of the flames there was the banging of the bombs there was the noise of the anti-aircraft and every now and again you'd hear an airplane go Ooh. And they would come down and machine gun the fireman working underneath. And uh, you've no idea how much bad language that promoted. <laughs> One thing that hit me straight away, the women were working. Women with sacks of coal on their shoulder, like that, loading the coal lorry. I said, oh God, it seems so strange to us because they were working hard like hell, you know, those women. During the war days, yeah. 
I don't know where I got the courage from. I said, look, if I won't go in the forces to kill people, I certainly won't make munitions to kill them. So they said, well, what are you going to do? You'll have to go to prison. So I said, well, so be it. I said, the only thing I'll do is I'll be a nurse. I'll go nursing. I knew that at my age I'd have to do something. I mean, I was, what, 19, 20? And I thought, well, I don't want to join the flipping land army. And I don't want to go in the timber corps, so I joined the ATS. I asked if I could go in the Rands. Jewish girls never went in the Rands. It was never thought of. And I hadn't realised that. I did it out of sheer devilment, because everybody said, you can't get in the Rands. And I took a chance and tried. I would have gone in any of the services. It didn't really matter. We came from way out west. When the war came, we felt that it more or less were your duty to do what you could. And there was this big program advertising of Britain is in need of help. And in all the newspaper, Churchill used to be big across the headlines, come and give a hand, give a helping hand, the mother country needs you. It was quite interesting because obviously we didn't know Americans beforehand or Canadians or French or Australians. We took it all as great fun, which it was. <laughs> we picked up two Americans, but I was so naive, I didn't really know much about sex, you see. But mine was very, very nice. And he just used to give me bubble gum and send me letters saying hi, Stella, and this type of thing. And certainly I can remember a lot of Poles. <laughs> Had a, had a reputation for being very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going to Covent Garden dancing. It was marvellous there. I remember one night a Frenchman took me round dancing the um, old-fashioned waltz. God, I didn't know where I was when I finished. He whirled me round and round. When I came over here, I was treated as a German. For the Germans, I was a bloody Jew, and for the English people, I was a German. But of course, I felt so Jewish, and I felt such a victim from the Germans that in those days, I could not understand how anybody could think that I could be a Nazi. You could only get a visa if you had a domestic permit, which meant you had to work as a domestic servant. Otherwise, you had to find someone to guarantee that you weren't going to be a burden on the community, which was almost impossible to obtain. So I was, I was going to be a housemaid, and uh, I thought, well, compared to instant death, it was a glorious opportunity. I can remember being absolutely horrified at the amount of damage that I saw in places like the city, to see what appeared to me to be acres and acres of desolation was really quite shocking. The Guild Hall was burnt out, but standing in its glory, towering over the wreck of the city with St Paul's, and you know, I'm sure that if St Paul's had ever suffered really great damage, I think the heart would have gone out of Londoners. But there it was, hope.